<laughs> there was a book that was written by uh, a British economics professor that became a bestseller. The book was called Erotic Capital, The Power of Attraction in the Boardroom and the Bedroom. This capital is also known as sexual or attractive capital. The word attractive actually comes from the Latin word attraere, which essentially means to draw or pull towards. The author stated that attractive capital was another form of capital. Now, if you do not individually have some form of capital, it becomes almost impossible to succeed at anything. Although there are various types of capital, one's charm or attractiveness can be considered one as well. Then how can you acquire this capital? Well, it is only possible from one source. The scholars who researched positive psychology divided the characteristics of man into 24 traits and everyone would have at least three to four of them as their strengths. One of these traits was attractiveness. Although the beautiful appearance of a lady in itself is charming, it is not the only form of attractiveness. For example, the diligence of a person who arrives at the center very early to prepare it for operation by opening the doors and cleaning can be seen as being charming as well. If a person is very honest and people think he is telling the truth, he possesses the appeal of honesty, which is why people believe him. Let's say someone is never late to a meeting, nor misses any appointments he has made. You can say that this person also has an appealing factor. There is a proverb that is related to the amount of fortune a person has. It goes, a great fortune depends on luck, a small one on diligence. In Eastern philosophy, luck is seen as the way of heaven, which is related to feeding the people around you. What does that mean? Well, if you buy meals for your partners who might be in hardship, that action can be seen as another attractive quality. Thus, as long as you have this charm, you can achieve success. If someone is a good speaker and explains the business for his partners, that person is very appealing, right? In any case, I think you are all charming people because those who aren't wouldn't be listening to this lecture. Now, the best way for a company to contribute to society is not by failing. If a company does fail, it is essentially committing the biggest crime. When a company is established and begins operating in society, it actually isn't in the hands of an individual, but the society as a whole because many people earn a living by working at the company. As such, the act of making a living isn't a laughing or shallow matter. Rather, it is a very sophisticated action because it is an invaluable way of maintaining one's life. However, if a business fails, it is basically going against this which is why it is considered a big offense. Hence, one of the founding principles of atomy is being, which is related to the survival of the company. Then, how can a company avoid failure? I will try to explain this with a simple X and Y graph. This corner will be our origin and the Y axis will be price. We will use P to signify price. The x-axis will be quality. We will signify quality with the letter Q. If we were to graph luxury goods, the quality would be very exceptional and the price would be very expensive as well. We will represent that as P. Therefore, this point here would mark luxury goods. 
Since the quality of these goods are superior and the price is expensive, who would be the target market? The target would be the top 1%. For the 1%, as long as the quality is great, they will be willing to pay these high prices. In terms of their wallet size, the price doesn't matter. However, according to many studies, the top 1% are more likely to buy goods at higher prices and feel good about it. So what do global luxury brands do with their price each year? They continue to raise the price at a fixed rate. As a result, no one thinks about buying something next year and just buys a product if they have the capacity to. Now, if the quality of the product was only this much and was sold at P, what would this be? This is essentially what happens at other MLM companies, which is why many people call it a scam. If anything, the price is higher. They might sell a dress shirt for 5K, even though the quality is only this much and the price is very high. Many people are fooled into doing this business because they think it will make a lot of money. Yet, these products themselves don't have any value. How can it have value without any quality? The price of luxury goods don't fall very often, even if it is a used product. Thus, these products have some form of worth, whether it is a displaying value or due to its quality. People feel satisfaction from just owning the product. In economics, this concept is known as utility. Normally, you get this sense of utility by actually using the product. However, the utility for luxury goods are not from their use. Instead, it is from the act of buying or showing off the product, which is known as conspicuous consumption. The utility one gets from such spending is very high. As a result, there is a class of people who enjoy quickly buying higher-priced goods. I'm not saying this is good or bad, because we live our lives finding this utility. Now, for these people, they don't find it from its use, but rather in the consumption and possession of the goods. Hence, the luxury brands are consistent to this concept. Yet, when the quality is only this much and sold at a high price, there are a number of victims. Why is that? Although they would have found value if they had bought luxury goods, they are actually purchasing products that do not have any worth, which means someone will have to suffer. So why are these products priced at this amount? It is due to the belief that money could be made in this manner. Unfortunately, they didn't earn money, failed, and many people became victims. As a result, if products of a lower quality then these luxury goods were sold at a lower price, like P1, people would be willing to buy them, and no one would be harmed. Hence, lower quality products being sold at a lower price would be okay as the goods aren't being overcharged. Now, what would happen if the quality was on par with luxury goods? but the products had a lower price that was set to P2. In this scenario, the luxury brands would go under. If the quality was very similar, or even if it was slightly lower, but the price was lowered substantially, these companies here would all fail. What kind of market would that be? I guess everyone's excited since you're just randomly adding Atomy to everything. This is what has happened in the current cell phone market. The saturation state of cell phone technology is very high in the market. There is almost no difference in technology between cell phones. It is generally just design differences.
Even the applications have become so similar due to their development. Thus, if cell phones with similar technology are sold at a much lower price, these companies here receive a big blow. As such, even the world's greatest company can still fail. Then what does Atomy mean by absolute quality and absolute price? Basically, in terms of quality, we are similar to the luxury goods, but we are selling at a price that is all the way down here. We will call this lower price as PA for Atomy. Why do you think Atomy set the price here? Well, Atomy would go bankrupt otherwise. One of Atomy's company vision is members' success. I have yet to see any company that has set their vision to the success of their customers. It is generally customer satisfaction or customer affection, right? This doesn't necessarily mean that these companies are bad. Rather, they are set this way for the survival of the company. If that's the case, why did Atomy set it to members' success? The business needs to help the member achieve success. And it should also allow them to make compensation if they do well. With the success of the members and partners, the sponsors would also be able to become successful. This would allow Atomy not only to survive but also exceed. What does that mean? It means that the president is extremely smart. What about the people who sell low-quality products at this price? They are not very intelligent. You won't be able to maintain the business because you cannot fool all the people all the time. This is from the quote, you can fool all the people some of the time and some of the people all the time, but you cannot fool all the people all the time. Thus, products that are of high quality need to be set to a price at this level if we want to survive and be in a state of being. An economics professor at the University of Chicago wrote a book that predicted that around 90% of jobs will disappear in about 30 to 40 years. Keep in mind that 30 to 40 years is not a lot. Basically, it will be the time when your children or grandchildren are already active in the job market and they won't be able to make a living without today's jobs because those jobs wouldn't exist and they would be doing different things. So, if we want to be around 60 to 70 years later, we need to survive, right? If we aren't able to, what will happen to the creation of income or jobs? Hence, Atomy doesn't have absolute product and absolute price, which is essentially a policy for maintaining high quality at a low price. Out of the goodness of the heart, but because it is the smartest method, and the policy will allow the company to survive. It might not be the easiest way for Atomy contractors to make money. However, all the ways to easily make money are gone because the smart people have already taken them. Then what course is left for ordinary people? Well, if you can reap what you sow, you would be doing something that is just and proper. It would be uncommon to earn more than the effort you put in, right? What happens if you earn less than that? You would think that it is extremely unfair. As such, Atomy is oriented towards reaping what you sow. In other words, you won't be able to earn money like a thug. There are many people who make money like this in society, but I have yet to see any of them live the rest of their lives happily. You can't earn money in this fashion. Which is why we always emphasize that you should never give up. The concept of super synergy of united heart is very important because you can't become successful by yourself in the atomy business. Super synergy of united heart essentially means that people become of one heart and work together. 
you can only succeed in this matter. Since this is a network marketing business, no matter how smart you might be, you are still just one node in the network. In the Atomy business, each downline or network becomes a shared capital. The bigger and stronger this network, the more money you can make due to the amount of capital you have, right? If the network is small or even if it is large, not sturdy, you won't be able to make money due to the lack of capital. The network itself is a form of capital. And many sociologists stress this fact. They call it social capital. The attractive capital is a capital that an individual possesses, while social capital is one that socially connects people with a network. The people within this network are connected with trust. Trust, as I explained earlier, is a type of charm. And if you don't have it, you won't be able to succeed. Now, relationship between Atomy sponsors and partners are supposed to last for a long time, right? People who don't have any empathy and only think about themselves won't be able to work together for long. You need to have at least one of the 24 different traits. You can be hardworking, honest, good at keeping promises, excellent at cooking, or articulate when speaking. You need to have some form of capital, right? At the very least, you need to be innocent, because people who are will listen to others. People who listen to others are better than those who don't. Basically, you need to have some form of the 24 charms. Any trait that humanity universally sees as good can be considered a charm. Be able to keep promises, arriving on time, going out diligently to serve others, buying a meal for someone, and being honest. All hold some universal value to mankind, right? As long as you possess at least one trait that is universally good to humanity, it is perceived as a charm. Thus, the positive psychologists believe that you shouldn't try to develop talent you don't have, but instead cultivate the strongest ability you possess if you want to achieve success. Hmm. For example, if you aren't good at speaking, you won't get better at explaining the business by studying. There is one royal leader who said, my specialty is driving, and did his best with that, while his sponsor explained the business for him. As such, his driving became his charm. Now, as I look around, I can tell that all of you have attractive qualities, but you need to first ask yourself, should I do this business or not? In other words, you're asking yourself, will you reap what you sow? Won't the people at the top or the sponsors take it all? And isn't this going above and beyond my ability? Because the other MLM business in the past went down this path. The longer you did the MLM business, the more products you had to store, since people wouldn't buy these expensive, low-quality items that had no value or worth. You also have to ask yourself, can someone like myself succeed? Because you might be a normal housewife or was an educator for 20 to 30 years, or even a public civil servant. Even if you don't have any network marketing experience, you will be able to succeed as long as there is super synergy of united heart. If you try to do this alone, you will never achieve success. The third question is, what can I do to succeed? Although you won't be able to suddenly answer all three questions at once, you need to make these decisions on your own. If you think about what is necessary for a decent job, you know that you need to, at least, study for four years at a college. So how can you learn everything in just two days at the Success Academy? You would only be able to scratch the surface in those two days and require continuous interactions with your sponsors to understand it better. Moreover, you shouldn't listen to what others say about this business. Instead, you need to research it on your own and make the final decision yourself. If you believe it to be a scam, then don't do the business. Yet, if you think it isn't, then you can decide to do it. There are three types of disciplines that are necessary for success, and it is impossible to be successful without these studies. 
The first discipline is having a cool head, which is the ability to make rational and level-headed decisions. Not only do you need a cool head, but you also need a warm heart, which is about showing kindness to others. In essence, you use your attractiveness and care for the people in your downline. People who only think about themselves can't live a good life. The last one is busy hands and feet, which is about diligence and taking action. Only when you have mastered these three disciplines can you achieve success. Hot-headed people are just noisy and don't accomplish much. All they do is create trouble and make things worse. The opposite of a warm heart is having a cool heart. People who are lazy don't have busy hands and feet and can't become successful even if they have a cool head and a warm heart. You must take action if you want to succeed. If you go to the center at 10 in the morning, sit down and read the newspaper at a table, complain about how everyone is wrong, and then go home when the time comes, how can you achieve success when you didn't take action? In Aesop's fable, who wins in the famous The Tortoise and the Hare? The tortoise did, right? In truth, the atomy business is like this race. People who think they are the best and recklessly rush things tend to give up and can't be found after some time. Yet, those who were slow and steady eventually became star and royal masters. As such, you should never give up because you will face many difficulties along the way. The phrase, get crazy to reach, is actually a pun because crazy can mean that you need to be insane or just passionately excited about something in order to achieve success. This phrase isn't from any of the classics and is a pun that was created in modern times. A pun is a humorous use of words to emphasize or suggest different meanings with like-sounding words. In essence, it is a play on words. Hence, this phrase is more or less a pun. For this phrase, the word crazy is referring to immersion. A few years ago, Samsung used this as their motto for the year. Although this was created by modern society and not from the classics, it is still a very important concept. In the Analects, there is a famous line that reads, they know who the truth are not equal to those who love it. And they love who it are not equal to those who delight in it. Simply put, unless you enjoy what you do, you can't become immersed. People who want to become actors and musicians can succeed as long as they enjoy it. Although people like Chan Ho Park, Ju Young Chung, Beethoven, Van Gogh, and Einstein might be in different fields, they were all crazy about what they were doing. As such, they were able to achieve success in their respective area of expertise. Going crazy can be defined as immersion, devotion, and commitment. Therefore, you need to focus your mind on whatever you do. Now, I will conclude this lecture with a quick review about the three disciplines that are necessary for success. What kind of head is required? Right, you need a cool head, which is about making rational and level-headed decisions. If you joined a company that sold low-quality products at expensive prices like in our example, it means that you don't have a cool head, right? Right? Rationally thinking, you will realize that this won't work. Only people who are rash and hot-headed would do this. What about your heart? A warm heart is required. In other words, it is about the success of the members and partners, as well as your consumers, by providing help to their domestic economy. You must never lie if you have a warm heart. Last, we have busy hands and feet, which means being diligent. You can't be hardworking with just your mouth and say, he did this, she did that, everyone is wrong. You need to do what you think. Rather, you need to be active with your entire body. I hope all of you can become star and royal masters in three to five years. Thank you for listening.